Now will we move on on to Ms. Lorena Ojeda from Argentina, who will present tapping into social emotional learning with our Storyscape. Ms. Ojeda graduated from National University of Tucumán. She holds two bachelors, one in English teaching and another in English with a major in literature and linguistics. She also holds a TESOL certificate. She has lived in the United States for eight years, working as an ESL teacher for language schools, implementing immersion programs. So with a further ado, let us give the floor to Ms. Lorena Ojeda. Hi. <clears throat> Thank you so much for having me again today. I'm really happy to be joining you guys and sharing some of the new insights from our Storyscape. Um, I will be sharing my presentation and, you know, sending any questions or any comments. We'll be happy to, to answer those for you. So um, if you guys participate in my presentation yesterday, I talked about social emotional learning. In this case, I'm going to develop it from a different perspective. We'll also be talking about the benefits of using stories in combination with social emotional learning, how we can develop empathy through stories, and how social emotional learnings are great ways to encourage different skills that we're going to uh, see together some final remarks and I'll be showing you how our platform, the Vosses platform uh, for our Storyscape is going to be used to meet these purposes. So in relation to social emotional learning, I have chosen uh, the perspective from uh, this organization for children. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, basically, the definition of social emotional learning has to do with these processes of developing self-awareness, self-control, interpersonal skills that are vital for school, for work, and for life uh, in, our, in general. In this case, if we practice social emotional learning in our schools, in our classes, we'll be able to benefit the whole society, uh, we'll be able to uh, contribute and strengthen different uh, relationships between peers, between families, between the whole community to benefit each other. Basically, uh, here I have um, uh, one of the main concepts in relation to social emotional learning, which is social emotional learning is directly connected to academic learning and success by managing uh, contributing directly on how learning affects and impacts our students. If we learn together with our students how to be socially aware, how to work on our self-awareness, self-management, how to make responsible decisions, and how we relate with others, we'll be able to create a great environment starting from our classes. Then we can move on to the schools, we can move on to the uh, higher levels of so social um, uh, stratification of the different social levels and how that can also impact positively in the instruction. Um, so why uh, our Storyscape in combination with, um, combination with our platform are going to also support uh, the benefits of social emotional learning. And these are great points to mention before I show you our platform, before I show you our different tools. Uh, one of them is people that have strong social emotional skills are able to better cope with challenges and they can also benefit, as I mentioned before, academically. If we control our impulses and Im we can manage our emotions successfully, we can also provide a foundation for positive long-term effects on all the members of our society. Also, social emotional learning helps students to build meaningful relationships, you know, not just for right now, but for their life. And finally, social emotional learning encourages positive social behavior 
and it decreases emotional distress, which, as we all know, uh, contribute to lower the effective filter that uh, makes sure our students can be ready and can be more prepared uh, to learn. So, we are using stories in our Storyscape, which is a story-based curriculum that is developed to support levels A1 and A2 for right now. Uh, so our curriculum has five units, six units, sorry. Five of those uh, uh, activities are five stories that have many different stories that students can incorporate and they can learn vocabulary and high frequency expressions by means of those stories because we believe that fiction creates a safe environment for a discussion of different topics. Students can also relate to the characters of the stories and events presented subconsciously so they can incorporate or acquire the new language expressions, but at the same time, they can connect with the different characteristics, characters, uh, events in the story, and they are more open to express their opinion within the context of the story. Um, students also can analyze stories from different perspectives and they get inspired by the content, the topics developed uh, throughout the stories. What happens in students' brain when we uh, introduce or incorporate storytelling in the classroom? We have the division here of the different uh, chemicals that are released during an experience with stories. So the first one to mention is cortisol. Cortisol is a, is a chemical that is released when we have tension, conflict, but also it increases our attention and focus. So memorable stories can have memorable effects in our brain. Oxytocin also is released in response to those feelings of connections. It helps students increase empathy and trust. And dopamine also is released in response to solving those conflicts and it creates pleasure and enables us to recall events accurately. It has been proven that a person, remem a person who listens to a story can remember the story 20 times more than if a person listens to just facts. So this is a very important uh, consideration to have uh, when selecting materials for our classes. What happens with the neural activity in our brain? Well, we have uh, also the, uh, known that there, are, there is cortical activities that our brain uses five times more when processes just data and facts. So there is more brain activity when we listen to stories. Neural coupling also synchronizes our brain, the listener's brain, with the teller's brain. In this case, it can also be used to present stories where students can develop empathetic understanding for medical, socioeconomical conditions that they didn't know about. And finally, the mirroring and then those neurons enable the listener to experience a, sto experience a story and connect in such an emotional level with the teller and the characters. So mirroring can be used in stories to help students understand different unusual situations and to develop empathy. So knowledge can also support empathy as we will see together. Today, I'm gonna present you the story called Stronger Together. Normally we start before we get into the story, the curriculum includes pre-reading activities where we introduce high frequency expressions, vocabulary through um, visuals, TPR, and also personalized questions and answers. So that is previous to the story and students can practice the new vocabulary and expressions before they start with the story. I'm gonna read this story for you and then we're gonna work together as we move. Stronger Together. It was dinner at the Barnashi's house. The phone rang. Hello, is that Luke? said Mr. 
Actress were Nash's boss, Kevin, for the fire station. Yes, it is. Is there a problem? Is it, It's your mom. She's in the hospital. She had an accident. A week later, Jennifer, Miss, Mrs. Varnashis, woke up. Everyone in the family was relieved. Her son, Luke, her daughter, Cleo, and their, dog, and their little dog, Daisy. Jennifer has always been a very positive person. I've had had accidents before, she says to the doctor. I'm a firefighter. I've always recovered. It was easy. What other accidents have you had? Asked the doctor. Oh, I've fallen. I've been hurt, burnt, but it's part of the job. I'm a professional. I work to get well quickly. I'm sorry to tell you this, said the doctor, but this is not going to be easy. Maybe you've had accidents before, but this time you can't be a firefighter anymore. What can be... What can the Barnashes do? Jennifer cannot return to the fire station and be a firefighter. Life is not easy. The Barnashes have bills to pay. They are stressed. Jennifer is very sad. She has always been a professional firefighter. What will she do? She lies in bed all day. Being a firefighter was her dream. Luke hates this. His mom has always taught him to be strong. But this accident has changed her. Well, I'm going to show her, he thinks positively. Luke is 16. He can earn a salary and pay the bills himself. Now it is time for Luke to be the professional. He sends his resume to some companies and has some interviews. Their interviews go well and his resume is strong because he is hardworking. He gets hired as a chef. He can go to school in the day and work as a chef at night in a busy restaurant. Mom, I earn a salary now, he says. I was hired as a chef, so I can pay the bills. Don't worry. Jennifer is surprised by her son. He has inspired her. He reminds her of the importance of being positive. If he thinks he can go to school and work as a professional chef, there is also hope for her. Jennifer knows Kevin, and the fire station wants to help her somehow. Jennifer can still use her hands and a computer. She changes her resume a little and sends it to, have, to Kevin. The fire station helps her get an interview in another department. She is hired as a 911 operator. She can still help people and be useful. It is not perfect, but life never is. And Jennifer is positive and knows she can do this. Luke, Cleo, and Daisy sit on Jennifer's bed after Jennifer tells them the good news. They all hug. The accident has changed things. But the Bagnashes are a positive family and they know they can do hard things. They know together they are strong. <sighs> Thank you for listening to the story. And well, our stories are, you know, not so long. You can tell the stories, you can share the stories with your students. Um, you can start by using our um, illustrations. You can also print the stories. You can use the audio because we also have audio for the stories. You can turn the stories into different uh, activities for your students. Okay. Uh, in this story, we explored the importance of positivity, how story can turn an unfortunate situation into a learning opportunity. In this case, we also have um, opened the door for discussion about unexpected situations that cause distress. What happens when you go through these situations? How do you react? Where are those positive attitudes that support a person in distress? Uh, what is stress? Like how important it is for us to support a person who is having a hard time? Um, you know, apart from the language uh, richness that this story provides and the practice on, you know, the target structures that in this case are um, 
you know, vocabulary for emergency, for health, and also uh, past perfect. We are also supporting students' ability to cope with unexpected situations and how we can support our classes with stories like this, how we can develop a program, and how, in this case, we can support social and emotional projects. In this case, we have one of those that is a breathing exercise with the infinity sign in which students have the inhale and exhale prompt here, and they have to use their hands to make the, the trace the same sign and while they are inhaling and exhaling. Um, it may sound like a very simple activity at the beginning, but it does have very positive impact into our students' ability to oxygenate the brain, to think clearly, to focus. So that also supports these uh, life skills that we also want to stress. Also, the importance of positive Positivity supports our ability to be resilient and overcome situations that are not always easy, as you saw in this story. And how we can nurture those by means of a positivity collage, for example, how we can transform these situations in a learning opportunity. Apart from that, <laughs> here I have a brain break that also ad adds up to, you know, how our brain is working. But uh, uh, it also is another activity that can help students to focus, okay, finding the different hidden words. And moving on to our curriculum and how we organize it. Basically, every unit in every uh, of the levels that we have, have a specific set of content to be covered. So the story that I shared with you, Stronger Together, is story number three within our curriculum. The vocabulary that we have worked and we have uh, introduced to our students is work-related. This story and this unit is part of the uh, health um, content or theme, and the grammar aspect that we have also introduced here is the use of the present perfect tense. And just like this, every unit and every level and every story has its own um, list of contents to be covered. Okay, this for uh, our stories, we have uh, five activities per story. These activities can include macro level activities like this one. It is a drag and drop uh, tool that allows students to organize the events in the stories uh, chronologically. This is an integrated activity Instead of having a reading comprehension activity, we are recording the questions and students will use our recording tool to record their answers. And these just are some of the ways in which we are working on the story at all different levels, while at the same time supporting social and emotional learning. As we also have per unit in which students will cover specifically the present perfect tense, a slide introducing them to the concept, examples that they can use. The same will be for the vocabulary that is designed for that unit. They will have also plenty of practice with slides and conversation, uh, different conversation tasks that they can do together in class or from their devices. Apart from that, here is an example of the way in which the vocabulary, the grammar and the vocabulary practice work. We also have after each slide, we have between six to seven exercises that are focused on grammar and they are used in context. 
The same for the vocabulary sections. We have plenty of practice for students also to review the vocabulary that they uh, incorporated in that unit. Additionally, we have the assessment that allows teachers to assess grammar aspects that were discussed in Unit 4, for example, vocabulary assessment also for the vocabulary that students covered during the class. Here you have integrated um, activities, you have a listening section here combined with a matching we also have and feature uh, the authentic material resources that will allow students to also uh, explore different English speaking countries around the world. That includes also maps, different types of panoramas that you will see in a bit. Um, here is one of our panorama activities, um, and it is an exploration of uh, different areas in the countries, and students have thinking routines to discuss every panorama. We also have authentic materials that allow students to uh, support authentic communication, native speakers interviews in which they will be exposed to different types of accent. And because we have also supported and built this cultural aspect, our uh, this is a way in which we assess students' ability to communicate in real life situations. So students will have a contextualized task uh, in which they will get first the, co the context, then they will use three modes of communication to support, in this case, interpretive listening activities that is connected with a uh, presentational and an interpersonal activity to assess students' uh, communicative competence. So, in relation to all this, we also have, as you were able to see, an array of stories that focus on different types of life skills that are necessary to support and to uh, inspire our students to develop while they're also having their English classes. So we have a story in relation to making compromises, mourning a loved person, frustration, cancel plans, supporting people in difficult situations, and more. These are just some of the stories that we have. So I'd like to invite you to scan the QR code that will allow you to get free access to our materials. We are featuring new sections in a level A2, new video tool activities for our students and teachers to use, new student picture activities, and today, we just launched accessible tools that will allow students that have visual impairment to be included in the classroom and enjoy also our materials and be included, you know, as part of the English classes. Finally, I'm going to be sharing with you the teacher-friendly tools that allow students and teachers to maximize their time. Um, in this tool, you will be able to assign activities to need practice or students who finish their activities first and you need to add more activities to them. You can personalize any of these activities and uh, make them, you know, your own. Any of the pages in our platform are also fully editable. So teachers can edit pretty much anything. Our platform features an open, flexible curriculum. Another added tool for teachers is that you don't spend so much time grading. There are auto graded activities and the, the ones that are teacher um, needed, uh, you know, we need to give feedback. You can record feedback, you can use those for productive skills. <clears throat> and finally, 
I am going to mention a little bit in relation to social and emotional learning, how according to CASEL, um, social and emotional learning can be developed or has four areas of development. So the first one includes building foundational support and plan for social emotional learning. In this case, as uh, our storyscape supports uh, social emotional learning, this can be a starting point to introduce social emotional learning in your classes. <clears throat> How uh, adults should strengthen these social emotional learning competencies and capacity so it would be great to not just teach that by saying it but by practicing it together with your students and that will help us promote social emotional learning for students and how practice is a is a continuous improvement so doing it every class with your students will also be a great way to support it so storytelling incorporates these uh, uh, skills that are needed to support social and emotional learning. So, so this is a great way to allow those opportunities to talk about different um, situations and understand each other and how we can also use these projects to model and be the source of inspirations for our students to practice these those social emotional learning strategies uh, you know this is the best way to, to to teach and to lead by examples so our storyscape is part of voces digital which is an american company and we have been in the market for 13 years in the u.s and expanding to europe and latin america we have more than 15,000 language educators. We are very careful in how we protect students' privacy through strict safety measures. So we also include those uh, very strict safety measures. And we are committed to inclusion uh, through social and emotional learning, through people who are represented in our stories, through the different ways in which we want to support inclusion. And like I said uh, a little bit ago, Today, we launched our inclusivity and accessible tools. And uh, we want you guys to use them and enjoy them with your students. So uh, please uh, sign up for a trial and you will be able to explore what uh, you know contributions you can make to your classes and how that can change and support all your efforts in a way that you've never experienced before. Thank you so much for listening to this presentation and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you guys may have. Thank you very much, Ms. Lorena Ojeda, for your contribution in this seminar. Uh, we're going to have room for questions and comments. We're going to start with teacher Angie. The question is very simple. The stories are part of a software or platform. I, we know that it is there is a free version or trial, but can you define it as a platform or a software? Uh, it is a platform. Um, the platform is built in uh, so that teachers can access different titles. We are uh, we support uh, different programs in our VOSES pro program. We have, you know, titles for German, Spanish, French, and English. Uh, is also another title, like, you know, we have our Storyscape is one series. We also have ESL. But yes, it is a platform. We integrate also with um, learning management systems such as Canva, Schoology, uh, and Google Classroom. Excellent. Thank you very much. We have a very nice comment by Teacher Rosa, which is... Um, it is about, it is very important to work on having a positive attitude in life. You were saying like, when you use the stories, you have 20% success in creating a, or generating an impact in future generations. It's very motivating. It is, it actually works uh, in many different uh, areas of life. You also can see that now storytelling 
is not only used for education, but for, for so, so many different ways, because this is our one of our primary ways of communicating. Uh, uh, human beings are storytellers by nature. So it is part of our genes to do it and to tap into those using uh, innovative tools and you know technology to, to enhance the experience is also something that can contribute and make a big impact into the classes. <clears throat> Thank you. We have one question by Jose Vadilla. Uh, what kind of subjects should we should should a teacher improve or develop using different stories to develop the present perfect tense? Um, I think making a story compre comprehensible um, has to do with, in this case, how we how we incorporate the use of the present perfect tense naturally uh, within the context of the story. So um, in this case, uh, we, the story that I presented, we worked on talking about jobs, right? But uh, the present perfect can be used to talk about any type of experience. And the idea is to also, because we have our editor tools, students and teachers can create their own stories. Um, they can discuss any situation that even is happening in their classes by using a story and incorporating it so naturally um, that I don't think it's necessary to know all the subjects, but to focus on what you need at the moment. Excellent. I'm sure that this plat platform provides a very complete experience. Grammar, um, analysis, uh, vocabulary. My question is, in the example that you provided, you were reading the story. The question is, can we add uh, sounds? Do we have um, a machine or kind of display where students can listen or play the story? Yes, students and teachers have the same tools uh, that we have to create the curriculum, to create the stories. So yes, by using the editor tool, they can add uh, their own audio. You can even have students reading different parts of the story so they can listen to themselves and they can be uh, the audio for the story. Uh, but yes, all the stories also come with a recording where they can play. They can decide whether, you know, they want to play the audio fast speed, normal speed, very slowly, depending on the student's level. This is also part of our tools. But yes, anything that you saw there can be editable. Everything is fully editable. So you can personalize it and make it your own. You can even change the illustrations. You can have your students, you know, draw their the sequence of the story and have their um, illustrations there. So instead of having the ones that we provide, you can make your own too. Excellent. Teacher Angie is providing another comment. It is about the connecting with the students and reducing the affective filter. It is very important the way the teachers have the possibility to connect, to facilitate a learning path where they feel motivated and they are not stressed. You were saying that this platform is motivating self-awareness self-directed learning and that fiction at the end creates a safe environment why is that important it is very important <clears throat> sorry because students <clears throat> not only feel uh, learning a different language can be intimidating but at the same time every store every student comes to the classroom with a, their own particular situation so if we open um, you know, provide a situation or provide a story in which we can talk, express our ideas freely. That also connects students with the teacher and they trust 
you know, the teacher. They can trust the teacher and they can feel safe. They can feel seen. They can feel understood. That has a way, uh, you know, higher positive impact, not only in the student's ability to learn, but also in their ability to uh, trust and support each other and connect with the teacher. Um, you know, the role of teaching and the te and teachers in general have also changed. You know, we are not the source of information anymore. We are now guides. We are guiding our students. But if you cannot trust the person that is guiding you, it is a little bit difficult, you know, that students will follow your lead. So I think building trust through stories is a great way uh, to start. Yeah. We can see in the comments of Susie Bautista. Bautista, sorry. I love how we can help students to go through and engage learning of the second language with their own personal experiences. That is fantastic. And it is very positive right now because stories are used in many different approaches and different techniques. However, you are um, showing us that that we can use the social emotional learning, which is different. How would you describe the difference between task-based approach, which is one way to use stories, or the social emotional learning? What is the difference? What is the impact? Thank you. The difference, I think, is um, a task-based approach can be focused on achieving one or a combination of communicative tasks. Which, is, which serves the purpose of communicating. If you're talking about social emotional learning, you're not just concentrating on communicating, but also on developing by means or through communication, empathy, self-awareness, um, resilience. You are going deeper. You're not just, you know, there is the first layer, let's say, which would be language right but also the second layer and the other layers would be attitudes how by using or by discussing uh, certain situations and certain aspects we are going to also develop life skills and using a combination of you know communication let's say task-based approach in combination with social emotional learning you're providing a more holistic approach to students as as people and how we support this through different ways uh, and combining, you know, learning the language with supporting life skills. Thank you very much. Indeed, is we are using different stories to uh, create a meaningful impact in students. Sandra has a very social question. Can you please share again the details for the free title? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. I got uh, uh, disconnected for a okay. second. The question is, can you, say can you again? share again the details for a free trial? Sandra Rojas. I can, give me one second, I'm going to share my screen again. That way teachers can, um, can scan the QR code. Um, and I can also send the, um, the link uh, to those who are joining now or who want to uh, act our platform can benefit from it uh, okay okay here we go sorry it's taking a moment <laughs> my internet is a little slow for whatever reason it's um, yeah yeah you'll see it in a second I promise there you go so you can scan the QR code um, there to access um, 
our stories, our platform, and you know, introduce this to your to your classes. Give me one second. I'm going to me. I'm using a viewer version because for whatever reason, uh, my computer doesn't <laughs> doesn't hurt uh, the part. Uh, the Here you go. One second. Uh, Besides the QR I, code, I maybe we can scan it and provide the, you see the link. Yes. Yes, please. Please. Sorry and see if that, that works for you guys better. Um, sorry about need. <laughs> okay, I, here is the one that I was talking about. You will be able to, to see the QR code in a second. Hopefully it shows up. <laughs> you can share it in the chat too. One second. There you go. It won't change. I promise. <laughs> Thank you. Is very there much. any other question that I can answer? Well, actually, we have just comments uh, by Claire. Students. Hello. Yes, we have one more comment by Claire Goodman. S students don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I couldn't hear it. It's, you couldn't. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. That's true. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Nice and clear. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing because that's probably what is making the connection a little bit Can you slow. listen now? Yes, I can hear you. Hello. I am reading uh, Isaac. I am reading Isaac's star, uh, comment. Yes, thank you, okay. Isaac, for, for your comment. Um, what I wanted to say is that um, something really interesting about this approach is that uh, we like to be very um, prepared for everything, right? And we want to have all the answers for everything. However, um, we as teachers embracing a different approach, in this case, social and emotional learning, implies being able to relate with each other and being able to um, understand each other and make sure we know that trial and error is part of the process. So um, this is something that uh, I wanted to, to say about it. And thank you so much for your comments. And it's, uh, you know, it really helps us support each other. Uh, thank you, Joanna. Yes, yes, you are correct, Johanna, because um, we, the concept of storytelling, you know, for us as teachers is normally like a reader. You know, you just have a reader, um, maybe use it at the, the end of the year, to, you know, to assess students' ability to retell a story, but uh, normally um, this is a relegated place that storytelling has in our curriculum. However, with our approach, you're going to be able to use storytelling as a curriculum on its own and cover all the content that you need to cover while at the same time uh, tapping into different uh, social emotional learning 
topics or other topics that are going to be also uh, interesting for your students.